Hello guys, good afternoon and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you again for tuning in. This is Miss Henderson and today I'm coming with a part two of BLS for healthcare providers test questions. Again, if you like these types of content and these types of educational material, kindly um, hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notification, share these videos and drop your comments below. I would really appreciate it. So I know you guys are looking at my videos so um, and you find some of you find it to help you with your educational journey. So um, it's free to subscribe, it's free to share, it's free to like. You don't have to pay anything for that. So that being said, let's dive into the video. So the first video I have here, the first question I have here actually, it's um, question number one. So question number one is states, if a victim of foreign body obstructions become unresponsive, becomes unresponsive after you send someone to activate the emergency response system, what is the next action? So what are you going to be doing after you send someone to um, call 911? What is your next step? So A, call the victim's doctor. That's, I don't think that will be it. B, perform abdominal thrust now. C, perform blind finger sweeps. No, start CPR beginning with chest compressions. So, the patient become unresponsive. So now the patient is not breathing. The patient is not responding to any stimuli. So you have to activate the EMS, the emergency response system, and then you have to start CPR beginning with chest compressions. By giving chest compressions, sturdy chest compressions, you are enhancing and um, providing blood flow to the brain to prevent um, the patient from um, brain cell death. So you must start compressions. That's the answer for that question. So let's look at question number two. Question number two states, why is it important to compress to the appropriate depth during CPR? A, adequate depth of compression is needed to enhance blood flow during compressions. B, adequate depth of compressions is needed to create airflow into the lungs and oxygenation. C. Adequate depth of compression is needed to prolong asystole. D. Adequate depth compressions is needed. So the correct answer for this question will be A as in alpha. Adequate depth compression is needed to enhance blood flow during compression. So the harder you're pushing and you're maintaining um, 2 to 5 centimeters, that will enhance blood flow to the brain. So that's the correct answer. Let's look at question number three. Question number three, what should you do when a child victim has a pulse greater than 60 beats per minute but is not breathing? So what are you going to do? A, give breaths and chest compressions. B, give breaths without chest compressions. C, give 30 compressions. D, shock the client. So this client is a child and they have a pulse rate of 60 beats per minute. So which mean normal pulse rate is 60 to 100 beat per minute, but um, they're not breathing. So the, you wouldn't um, give compressions because they have a pulse. So you're not going to give compressions. So that one is out. So you will give breaths without chest compressions. So B will be the correct answer for this question. 
So question four states, what is it, what is the best way to relieve severe choking in a responsive adult? Start CPR immediately? No, this question relates to choking. B, perform abdominal thrusts. C, give five back slaps followed by two breaths. D, give two breaths, reposition the airway after each breath. So the correct answer is um, abdominal thrust or what you call the Heineck maneuver where you go behind the patient and you give a um, quick upward thrust to um, push the object out. So B is the correct answer for that question. So let's look at question five. Question five states, what size of AED pads should be used for a child less than eight years of age? A, infant pads may be used if pediatric pads are not available. B, adult pads may be used, but they should be cut in half before application. No. C, only one adult pad should be used. D, adult pads, those may be used if pediatric pads, those attenuator are not available. So D is the correct answer for this question. Let's look at another question here. Question seven, what is the first step to perform once the AED arrives on the scene? A, turn on the AED. B, place the AED pads on the chest. C, complete five cycles of chest compressions. D, deliver two rescue breaths before using the AED. So, when the AED arrives on the scene, the first thing you should do is to turn the AED on. After you turn the AED on, it will guide you, the prompts will guide you what is the next steps to do. So you follow the prompts, um, but the first thing you do is to turn the AED on. So A is the correct answer for this question. So guys, I think these are the few questions I have here to help you um, pass your BLS for healthcare provider. Um, maybe you're taking the original class for the first time or you're taking the renewal. I hope these questions can help you to um, pass and achieve your um, BLS certification. Again, if you like these types of content and these types of material, please um, consider smashing that, um, smashing the, um, the like button and also turn on your bell notification and please subscribe to my channel for more educational videos. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. I'll catch you in the other one. Thanks for watching. Bye.